some love. Oh, thank you. And so thank you. Excellent. Okay, we've selected, there have been great questions, and we won't have time to get through all of them, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. And I'm gonna, uh, some of them are directed at individual people, uh, some, most of them aren't. And so um, I'll just throw it open and people can, can answer uh, for each one. This one, um, the first one we'll start with, I think it's an interesting one. It says, uh, from Anne, if you could give us all a one-word piece of advice for our own science storytelling, what would it be? And P.S., thanks for showing us how sexy science is. I don't think that referred to your shirt, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so, one, you know, that we can probably do. One word, I guess we can go across, or uh, if you want. One, any, any, well, I, you don't have to be everyone. Anyone want to give a one word piece of advice? Yes, go ahead. Algebra, learn algebra. Ooh, Ooh I got one word. Yep. I got one word, and that one word is ambition. That is, that is something not encoded by any practicing exam in the school system. Yet, in fact, if you look at the most successful people there ever were, they are not the ones necessarily who got straight A's. Those are the ones who had ambition, which overrides it all. Yeah, OK. I agree. It's a long word, but it's a good one. Um, I, I would add, the, I would say passion. Uh, I think, you know, in the terms of storytelling, too many people, we said this last night too, too many people, I think, are afraid to inject their own story or their own passion when they're talking about it at science. But if you don't talk about what you're interested in, no one else is going to be interested in it. Empathize. What? Empathize, because the best people, the best teachers, uh, of science and the best writers about science are the ones who can empathize with people who don't quite get it yet. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> any other, any other, anyone else want to throw in? You've been I, jumping ahead. No? I would, I, I would yeah, just I, say, I, just, yeah, Richard, yeah. What? I was going to say em empathize in exact for the same reason, but I'll say instead poetry then. Poetry, excellent, <laughs> excellent. Anyone? Don't I have would to. just say that it, you should be able to tell it so that your mother can understand it. Hey, that's good. My mother never listens, but it's okay. Um, and if your mother's a theoretical physicist? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she should tell you then. No, all right, fine. Thanks. Okay, here's one that's actually a little bit related um, to, and, and, but, uh, to what Neil was just talking about, but I think it, it, we can expand on it. I've always, Anita says, I've always wanted to be an astronautical engineer, but I am horrible at math, but I've got lots of passion. Can this dream ever be a reality, and where do I start? So it's an interesting, you know, I guess I'll start with that. I mean, I think, as, as Bill said, you know, math is the language of science, and I think you, you, you have to be able to ha be adept at it. Math is the language of the universe. Yes, you're right. I agree with you. Brian? I agree, but, 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 but let me just finish and then we can, uh, uh, that too many people think that um, you have to be a mathematical wizard to be uh, even a physicist, I mean, much less an engineer, <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, I took a lot you know, it, it takes all types. Uh, I know people who won the Nobel Prize, I know people, y y you don't have to be the best mathematician in your class, you don't have to be a whiz. It takes all types to do science, and that, well, any stereotype just doesn't work. If you're interested, do it. What's that have to do with you knowing Nobel laureates? Who, who were not the best in their class. Oh, fine, thank you. Okay. I, I mean, who weren't necessarily even that strong in math. Okay. But the other thing, I'll just say, you say you're bad at math, I bet you're not that bad. And I just want to remind you that there's, when it comes to math, there's no substitute for practice. It sucked for me, <laughs> it sucks for, I mean, you just have to practice. So when you come to me, you come to me and say, oh, I'm bad at math, I am open-minded, of course, but skeptical. I'll bet you can do it, whoever you are. You know, that's an important point. We, we, we were talking about it last night, too, that, and, and it touches on what you said. You know, I like science museums because, often because they show science is fun, but science is, is hard work, like anything, to do, like music, like anything else, to do it well. And it takes a lot of work. So you just, and if you don't enjoy it, you can't do the work. 
But, but just enjoyment alone isn't enough. You've really got to be willing to work at it. I think what's really going on here is people presume that in order to be good at, in order, they presume that if the math is not coming easy, that therefore you'll never learn it. And, and I meant it literally that math is the language of the universe, and it's like any other language, especially a language that does not share the Roman alphabet. So for example, if you wanted to study Chinese, it looks completely intractable at first. It looks like Greek. It, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, so, and you can ask the question, how long does it take one to become fluent in Chinese if you're not Chinese yourself? And so it can take years, and five years, almost 10 years if you never go to China. You go to China maybe five years of intensive exposure and you've never done that with math. Imagine that level of exposure to math, what kind of fluency you would have at the other end of that pipeline. So at least give yourself the opportunity that any person learning a foreign language would give themselves before you turn around and say you're not good at math. Well, Brian, do you <laughs> get me started. Yeah, you don't want to get him started. I, mean, I, I know that from experience. Um, you're actually only, you're a professor of math as well as, as, well as physics, probably the only one on the table. Yeah, and the here. question that comes to mind for me is, how do you know that math is the language of the universe? I was going to say, what about I, the multi? The universe told me. It's <laughs> <laughs> a okay. good first approximation, I'll tell you. Now, okay, we're now doing but, science but by revelation. Go, Lawrence, but, before you go, I'm yeah. just wondering, because I, I have a question about this. Yeah. Could you imagine that one day far in the future we encounter some alien civilization and they say, hey, show us what you've done to understand the universe and we bring out our math books with all our theorems and physics and they turn to them and say, math, we tried that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it takes you just so far. <laughs> <laughs> and the real way to do it is like this. I would say that whatever that real way is, well, is not manifest to us at this moment. And until that day happens, where an alien tells us how backwards we are, all I can say is that the math that we did invent out of our human brain, as you surely know, Eugene Wigner said, the unreasonable the effectiveness, effectiveness of, of mathematics in describing the universe, the fact that it works at all is sufficient enough for me. But, 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 no, but I'll, I'll, here, I want to I wanna, I wanna have a no it just hey, because, hey, wait, hey. it just because you still can't figure Just out your string bigger. theory. Okay. Back in your Don't come corner. to crying to me. Back in your Don't come crying to me. You can't figure it out. Well, in fact, you got him started. See, you got him started. Said, don't get me started. Don't get him started. No, but I want to go on record. He warned you not to get him started. Yeah, I know. I told you, but I want to go on record. I want to go on record, and this is a momentous occasion. I want to go on record as agreeing with Brian. Um, <laughs> Is anybody but, uh, keeping the record? But no, in the sense that uh, it is fascinating if you're a theoretical physicist to wonder when you find something fascinating, whether uh, at math some mathematical formalism fascinating, whether it's a property of our brains or whether it's a property of the universe. And, uh, and we just don't know, I think, the, is the answer. We, if you stri if string right, theory but, looks but let me ask you a question. Yeah. I find it slightly confusing because, Neil, you describe math as something that we create. So why is it the thing that we create is somehow intrinsic to the universe? Isn't that awesome? That's our description. It's a, it is awesome, it's a awesome. remarkable surprise. It, it is surprising. Description. I don't lose sleep over that. I celebrate it. It's a good thing. <laughs> I, I celebrate it too. Yeah, but, 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 the the question, but it is a question. There may be limitations yeah. in understanding the universe because of the way our brains work. And I think... That's uh, surely and, the case. That's yeah, surely the and, case. And for Republicans, it's already happened. But it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's but, <laughs> but, but um, uh, no, but seriously, that's an interesting question, and we, you know, it, it, we really have to wonder about that. And if you're, again, uh, working, as, as some of us are at the forefront of physics, we, you wonder at some point when, when it's going to end. It's some Republicans. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but to the questioner's question, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't worry about the possibility that it, mathematics is going to turn out to be ineffective in describing the universe and use that as a reason to not keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> and press on. That's right. Be, 
Okay, next question. Could be an engineering perspective. Yeah, no, there you go. Excellent. Next question um, from Joel. What do you believe or hope will be the most significant scientific advancement over the next few decades? And I, I, have, I know I have a pat answer to this, but I'll wait to see if anyone else has one. 